Hello everybody and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will, I'm a D&D sex icon and I'm back today with the full cast and crew of The Long March for yet another episode. All I've been told by chat is that ducks happened last week because I was away traveling in Iceland. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm back expecting ducks and excellence. So uh, let's, let's see what happens. So let's get around the cast and crew, let's figure out who we are and who we're playing tonight. And let's start with our dungeon master, Josh. How you doing tonight, my friend? I'm good, I'm good. Will just drop something on me, super, super exciting. So, uh, yeah, uh, a little thrown, but I'm excited to uh, just come in and uh, and destroy the world uh, a little bit more and uh, try and explain to Will what happened last week uh, with these wonderful people. Super excited. Um, so, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but enough of that. <laughs> Great stuff. We also have with us tonight Tall Squall. How you doing, Tall Squall? I am doing great. Ready to have some fun. Yeah, there's yeah pigs, a pig, a pig, a duck, and a torturer walk into a bar. Um, is kind of what happened last week. Wow. But uh, really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I not even sure if we got where we're going. I think we got sidetracked and did we feed someone? Did we feed the guy to the duck? I you forget exactly what excited. happened to the guy we killed. Crazy. We didn't do good. Uh, Anyway, I'm I'm playing Calvin Horton, and I am just more than happy, pleased as punch to be here to join you all today and play some bard fun excitement from down south. So uh, let's get going. Let's get this uh, hoot nanny hooting. Absolutely. Uh, We also have Lorelani with us tonight. Tia, how you doing? I'm doing great. Fantastic. I got to watch uh, the show that Encounter Josh was on just before this over with Laugh Level India, and it was hilarious. So I started the morning off watching some D&D, and now I'm ready to play. Uh, I am playing Sarah, a champion archer fighter, and she's a 14-and-a-half-year-old girl. She's lots of fun, and I'm looking forward to getting started. Absolutely. And last but not least, we have Little Cup of Dough. Little cup of dough. Jesus, I can't speak at all today. Oh, that's cute though, because a dough like a little baby deer. Little cup of dough. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> How you doing, uh, Jessica? Yeah. Uh, I am good. Uh, I'm Jess, little cup of Joe, all those things. Um, I play Lucy, the war wizard from Breckendale, which is a real bad thing to be right now in this world. And yeah, ducks happened and we got a pig and i don't don't, i don't know what it's weird i'm excited to see where that goes (laughs) and it's always a fun time (laughs) great stuff uh as myself i'll be playing curtis iago fearson uh who uh i don't know how much he knows about these ducks but i'm sure he's about to learn a lot about them uh as am i he is the human rogue of the party and uh diplomat slash spy uh, slash terrible father figure. So uh, I'm excited to get back to play Curtis today. Uh, but before we do, I remind you guys uh, of how you can interact with today's shows and of course our sponsors who include Fantasy Grounds, our virtual tabletop of choice. All of the, in fact, I'll go to Fantasy Grounds now where you can see the, uh, the, the sexy map that we'll be using today of. Uh, our world, we're at Breckendale and Rivercroft at the moment, so that's exciting. Uh, but you can check out Fantasy Grounds for free, you can try out the demo, or you can get one of their licenses uh, to play different hundreds of different uh, tabletop role-playing games. Uh, also, whalinggames.co.uk is a place to go to get all of your D&D books, or your D&D minis, and your Warhammer minis as well, at up to 20% off the retail price. You guys can also interact with today's show, so if you haven't followed yet, hit the follow button and join us. Because when we hit 20 followers, you guys get to decide what happens next in our campaign. Uh, Also, here is the tweet for you guys as well. And when we get to 20 retweets, we'll have another viewer decision for you guys to mess around with. And of course, you can donate to Affect the Game as well by giving players Nat 1s, Nat 20s, Wild Magic Surges, and sounds like ducks as well. Uh, So be (laughs) sure to get involved and have some fun with that. But... Uh, the task of this recap will go to our dungeon master, Josh. Uh, so, Josh, what happened last week on the show, my friend? Please do explain to me. I well, first of all, Will, I have a question for you. Um, mm. The party left uh, the tavern. So, what does that mean has happened? We left a tavern for the, f- the first time ever oh, in the long so, so, so what does that mean has happened? 
So did it burn down? Did the tavern burn down? It was destroyed by what kind of tree was it? Oh, that's right! The uh, uh, giant redwood. The sequoia. Yeah. Through, through the sequoia tree. Tree. Just uh, that was the uh, that's the reason they left. Uh, you, your character Curtis, oh, has suffered a head wound um, during this, as it literally grew through the room you were in and uh, like tore through the ceiling of the tavern. Nice. Um, as you were carried out um, in the rain, uh, you know you've been bundled into the back of a carriage and uh, have spent your time sort of trying to recover from this wound as uh, no one has any uh, ability to heal you as such yet. Um, but now uh, you find yourself laying in the back of a carriage and there is uh, blood on the floor. Uh, there is a dead body laying next to you. Uh, there is a man that you recognize to be the torturer who is sat at your feet. Um, you've no idea where you are. And um, there is also a creature that is being doted on by Sarah. The creature looks very similar to Sarah, has curly red hair. That is actually, as you're focusing now, you realize it's feathers. Red feathers that form sort of wild hair uh, and a really pouty mouth. Um, it has a like a, a robe covering its uh, top half because it is naked, uh, and it is making strange sounds uh, that sound something like quack, quack. Its lower half huh. of its body is large uh, and feathered. Um, it is a red feathered duck on the lower half of its body. Uh, it's only a baby, uh, and by baby I mean it's only about three foot tall. And that is what you wake mm. up to, with no explanation of the events that have gone before. I uh, groggily kind of sit up, and uh, remind me of the torturer's name. Because <laughs> I have forgotten it. Can't tell if you're trolling me. It's Duran. The rat, that's right, of course. It is. God no, damn I completely it. forgot. The, the one thing that I forgot to bring with me, um, actually, probably is in my hard drive, in my central hard drive, is my notes, so I don't have that. Okay, uh, so I look up at uh, Duran and I'm like, what the, the fuck is going on here? What happened? Where am I? Well, you're lying in the back of the car next to a dead man. And that is some kind of thing that was like them. Sure you did, princess. That okay. is something. I don't know what it is. Uh, and, well, they just killed a bounty hunter who was here to collect it. We're in some pissing little hamlet somewhere. Uh, where's everyone That's... else? Is that okay? Um, looks around. You know Sarah is, like, doting over this creature, trying to get it under control. The rest are just outside. Where Sarah. about? Hmm. Sarah, you were cool too. What? What? I'm trying to get the shirt on. Oh, you're up. Yeah, Hello. I'm up. What the hell is that thing? Well, um, I'm not really so good at explaining. Oh, God. See, it's already happening. It's already happening. Ah. Uh. <laughs> maybe you should ask maybe you should ask Lucy uh, is, is, uh, okay she's outside I'll uh, like get to my feet and uh, your feet move are shaky this. Like, you're okay yeah, yeah. You're, you're, but you've been out so I got, like, is it like bandages if I like feel my head is there like bandages up there or is it just like uh, a... no one has actually bandaged you <laughs> Of course, you I have tried, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why I asked. We're, we're super good at uh, tending to our companions. Yeah, sort of like wipe away some like caked blood and uh, get to the, uh, the the door of the the carriage. Let's look outside. I believe Lucy and Calvin are outside, basically drinking. <laughs> yeah, you are both <laughs> drinking. Uh, we are drinking heavily, and Calvin is just like. <laughs> 
Otter than a dire wolf. It, that doesn't work either. Stranger than a stranger oh, than a. He just can't come up with anything better than a than a duck stuck to him to a, to a doll. We broke. We actually broke Calvin last week. He had yeah. no. He had no uh, turn of phrase that was stranger no than reality. Um, stranger yeah. than yeah, stranger a baby a, glued to a duck. <clears throat> you uh, yeah you. You step out, um, you notice that uh, it's getting late, um, there is a small hut next to you, uh, it's a modest dwelling, it's nothing fancy, uh, it's most, mostly made of wood with a thatched roof, uh, and on sort of the veranda, there is a very tall, sort of seven foot tall, hulking human, uh, with just a stunned look on his face, a quite short buzz cut hair, and just, uh, looking around, um, You, you people are st- not. You, you people are odd. I have to agree, guys. <coughs> Calvin, Lucy, hey, oh, oh, I'm. Uh, oh, we're awake. I think I'm up. Oh, yeah, I think so. Goodness. You're gonna need one. Of- <laughs> <clears throat> hey, partner, you're gonna need some of this to as you catch up. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, well, Lucy looks to Calvin like, should we tell him? <laughs> Oh, we don't even. I, yeah, some creature well, in there. I don't understand it, but is everyone oh, okay? You Congratulations, you're an uncle. You saw there is sudden. All right. There is suddenly a squeal, and next to you is the tallest pig you've ever seen with a saddle on it. It's got really long legs, lanky. It's almost sort of like three foot tall. Uh, Comes up to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I. Yeah, you're an uncle to a duck, and a. Uh, uh, I don't even know. Uh, an aunt to a pig. Here, just drink. <laughs> yes, I think um, the, the al- alcohol is important right now. Um, so we have a riding pig, and we've adopted a duck person, and glued to uh, a human. Y- yes. I- I, I Okay, no, it's that's 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 good. That's good. At this point you, you can you see probably Sarah better chasing off while the you duck were not around and um. trying to put like a little shirt on it from her disguise kit. Get back here. Yeah. Okay. So where are we going? We we were going somewhere to find the prince, is that where we're going? Yes, yep, yes, we're still on our rest. way. Bomba's okay. rest, that's the spot. I remember I was getting hit by a tree, and then not yes, much else. Um, that, yeah, that so there was, was that a, too. A tree grew right out of the ground and destroyed most of the inn. So uh, I, we probably shouldn't go back there exactly when we. Do you guys tell okay. him about the uh, writing? Oh, the writing that was above. Oh, oh, the writing in the sky. That was, uh, mm. was it's a traitor? Yeah, Something? think on your sins, traitors, is kind of what, is what they said. Just like, uh, yeah, just like. Wait, the, the, just the, the, the like, sky had a message on it? Some, yeah, some... I was going to use a reference that we can't use, so never mind. Bring us Dorothy, just like that. Just like that witch over that Emerald City that uh, we, we, ta- we heard about. Oh yes, that story. Right. I remember that one as a child. Um, so yes, it seems we may have some enemies who are capable of magic. That yeah, you don't say. Spider. As I look at the duck and look at the pig and <laughs> <laughs> look once again, give the stink eye at Lucy. Oh, <laughs> so um, what? with <laughs> with all of the it's magic surges. Pigeon, the rest from subs. There's three wild magics for Calvin, and mm. one for oh, Calvin. Another one. Uh, one for Calvin's mount. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh wait. <laughs> so am I rolling for the mount as well? Yep. I've yeah. got two. I've got two done. Okay. Alright. So uh, I got two mounts. So I'm rolling for a mount. Yeah. It looked like uh, Calvin can't be harmed by refined metals for the next one d four hours. Be useful. Um. He also thinks that he'll contract every disease that he encounters. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's oh, that's no. gonna be fun. 
Oh, that's not going to be good. Uh, You're a germaphobe. Oh, this that's is lovely. Though. Hey, so just because we're in counter role play and of course, uh, next potion imbibed by the caster causes him to sprout tentacles. Because yes. in counter role play. Because you have 10,000 options. You have 10,000 options. A <laughs> the moment. I do have a potion. Yes, so I become actually, I become like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. great. It's gonna be amazing. And you thought the lizard's tail out of my chin was bad. Oh boy, I can't oh, wait. Oh shit, this. oh no, I didn't really roll it. I thought I had rolled it. I thought I had rolled it. <laughs> oh, you thought, did you? Oh, Jesus, please. I was oh, about to like, be like, no, 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 no. Yeah, sorry, Pigeon. We've already got, we got it for uh, for Calvin there, so we'll uh, yeah, okay, keep that on the Calvin. Um, <laughs> false alarm <laughs> and false, uh, false celebration. Last one for your mount, I think. Oh, yeah, this works perfectly for my mount. This is for the mount, and because he's if he weren't tall enough, target's toes <laughs> each grow one d twelve inches, rolling for each separately. <laughs> So I now have a wonky toad. I mean, I guess his hooves wonky toad, or even worse, does he, he grow has, toes? You you realize that uh, your pig has claws. Good. Wow. You notice that, that they're not actually. The so you know how you know how uh, you put like um, you put horseshoes on horses. Uh, this right. thing has like essentially to give it a bit more grip uh, as it's kind of. Uh, struggles sometimes because it's quite tall and it moves quite quickly it, to give it extra grip and it'll give it an extra 10 feet of movement it doesn't have a lot of movement you could probably still it moves about the same speed as you do um and uh it can now make a claw attack well i guess pulling i finally sort of see it pull one of its hooves out of the mud and i just yeah. kind of look at it and i'm like well that's nastier than a plucked owl bear that got shaved last Tuesday, but might be useful. What kind of pig? Is I'm not gonna ask how this thing happens. I, it's too much. <sighs> okay. Well, how how uh, how close to the uh, the place are we? I think we're how finally a day away. away. <laughs> yeah. you, haven't slept, you haven't slept yet, so yeah, you were you're about yeah. two days out. So uh, you. Uh, You've got a place, they've secured a place for you to sleep, which is this guy's offered you refuge. Um, he offered you food, uh, and we'll do that scene now where he comes in, and due to a wild magic search from last week, uh, around, oh, yeah. uh, around Lucy, uh, metal burns hot enough to melt. Uh, no, fire yeah. burns hot enough to melt, burn metal, enough to melt metal uh, for the yeah. next few days. So literally they, they're cooking a pot, and the pot just, yeah. m like, the bottom melts yeah. out, and, like, stew goes everywhere. So they... Uh, <laughs> they offer you like bread and cheese, uh, and that's all they have. Potatoes. There's not a lot. Yeah. Oh, and potatoes. That was it. Baked potatoes, yeah. uh, which were buried <laughs> in the uh, actual fire itself, and they pull them out and clean them off. And uh, you guys all have a potato, a little bit of bread, and some cheese. And uh, they sit you down around the table. Um, one of them will offer you um, the elderly man whose house you're staying in. He comes over to you, Curtis. He says, uh, "Do you need um, uh, something for your?" your head uh, yeah who the hell are you do i know these guys uh oh, uh, oh my name um finds notes real quick because i can't remember his name, oh, my now, name. You guys I am, well you see here's the thing funny story about my name uh <laughs> is that it is <laughs> he introduces himself as uh the mayor of this little uh hamlet uh this is, uh, this is, uh, my, my son, uh, Gorm. And Gorm just lumbers in, just... No. His name is Law. His, his name is Dorm. Oh, Dorm. Okay. Dorm. Yep. And what's the mayor's name, or is that the mayor? Uh, the mayor, uh, the mayor's name is, uh, Dakar, I believe. Okay. Yeah, Dakar. Just redoing all my notes. Okay. Okay, well, uh, thanks for uh, the offer of helping my wounds. Um, uh, that would be appreciated. He nods and he comes back a few uh, minutes later with um, uh, basically a, mor uh, a mortar and pestle that he has sort of crushed some local roots in. Uh, it's a particularly 
it's got a really earthy smell to it, uh, and he's added water to it and sort of mixed it up, and it's kind of a little gross, but there's not a lot to it. And he says, oh, it's a natural, natural painkiller. It should help lower your headache and make you easier to think clearly. And, and uh, here's some, and he offers you some bandages. They're not much, just white scraps. I'll, I'll, I'll like self, self-administer self some, uh, yeah. some first aid. Mm. Um, and uh, <laughs> having sort of caught up with what's happened, he's figured it's like we traveled for a while. These we came into the village with these guys. Uh, mm. uh, thanks for your hospitality uh, and your little village here. I'm from the Freelance, um, so uh, ah, you. He's like so already so from home. Uh, it uh, must have been a hard journey. I. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I'm sure you're weary from the road. And he leads you through to a room which is basically uh, two double beds, um, one of which uh, you can see uh, Gorham is sort of gathering up his uh, his stuff and, and moving out of the room to give it over to you guys. Uh, there are two double beds, and there's a roll mat that's been rolled out on the floor. This is, uh, you're, you're most welcome... Uh, Will you be staying uh, another night, or do you have to leave in the morning? Have you guys slept? Looking back to the uh, party. No, we need to. We we probably should take a little bit of time here. Mm-hmm. It's been a strange night, and I'm quite drunk already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys get some rest. I'll uh, I'll take first watch. I've had plenty of sleep. All right. Sounds like a good idea. Where's my stuff? <laughs> go back into the car and like yeah. get my ice pick and my uh, yeah, <laughs> blow and that kind of thing. And then that one for all the players except for Calvin because everyone else is picking on Calvin. Thank you, Pitch. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you uh, you guys come into the room and there's some uh, sheets and, and and stuff laid out. I mean, it's you know threadbare and rough and uncomfortable, and it's nowhere near as nice as the. Uh, uncomfortable sleeping you had in the tavern, uh, which is to say something, but I mean, it is a shelter from the rain uh, and from the wind. And it's nice to not be, you know, sleeping in a tent out in this. And uh, Gorham just closes the door and just says, uh, oh, sleep, sleep well, have a, have a nice night, strange people. Clicks the door shut. Of course, thank you. Thank you, well, yeah, thank you. Hmm. And uh, yeah, you guys have uh, a night. You've got. Um, where are we? Uh, Curtis is taking uh, first watch. Sure. Yeah, I figured he's probably feels okay. like he slept enough. And uh, you guys <laughs> divvy, divvy up the beds. Um, you notice that uh, Duran just slumps into uh, a corner, uh, making himself uncomfortable as he can, and. Uh, Immediately is just out like a light. Yeah. You guys I'll, take a rest. Uh, keeping a particular eye on that guy because last I remember I didn't trust him. Mm. He openly admitted that he uh, tied Sarah to a rack. Now, uh, Star Yeah, on. I actually yeah. want to catch Sarah before uh, she goes to sleep or if she's playing with the, the duck to, to talk to her about. Talk to her about yeah, that. Yeah, like rather. taking like little breadcrumbs or whatever and just. <laughs> She's like got them like in sort of her, like in her uh, top and has just like rolled it up, swept them all off the table quietly and is now feeding her that. I've used my material from my disguise kit to make her like a little shirt so she's not just running around half naked all the time. What? Well, get back <laughs> so, here! Uh, you have to finish your dinner! The duck is the duck over and is now lying on its side, unable to write itself. Sorry, Kids, I swear ready. these days, they just won't listen. You don't say. <laughs> Calvin just chimes in from the group. Uh, Calvin, just go to sleep. I think we both need it. Uh, to give you uh, the layout of this room, you've got uh, one door that leads through into like the main house, and then another door that leads straight out into sort of like the garden area where they're growing sort of vegetables and bits and pieces. And that's a uh, crit fail to uh, Calvin from Wandering Silence, just so he doesn't feel left out. Thank you, <laughs> oh, aren't you just oh. the sweetest thing? <laughs> How nice. So I'll take Sarah to one side. Sarah, can I uh, walk with you for a moment? 
Yeah. I'm really glad that you're feeling better. I was kind of worried Thanks. about you. Yeah, I uh, must have taken a pretty good one there. I don't know how long I was out for, but feeling better it's now. It's a bit Thanks. weird with the tree growing through the ground and all. That sounds like it. Yeah. From what I remember, it was weird. It looks like things have only gotten a bit weirder, though. Uh, hey, last thing I remember, I, I just met with um, Duran, and he had he Her pretty much said that... Her face kind of sours a little bit. Yeah, he, he had pretty much said that um, he was the guy that, like, tortured you. Yeah, he had me on the rack, and he said that if I didn't do what he said, he was going to torture me some more. But don't worry, someday I plan on killing him. Did he, uh... Did he hurt you? She just kind of nods, sadly looks down. That's alright, though. That's what adventuring's all about. You get hurt sometimes. And she kind of rubs her shoulders, remembering the pain of the rack stretching them. Uh, almost beyond their limits and does her best to kind of toughen up. He's been sent by the crown, which means he needs to travel with us. She kind of looks dejectedly off to the side. But it's um, all right. I'm a better fighter than he is anyways. I'm sure you are. I just wanted to make sure that you are okay. Um, I, uh... After this is over, I'm sure that, um... The crown will will see their way to uh, seeing things our way, which is to say, uh, getting rid of Duran. Or you know, a lot of things happen on the road. We go into some pretty dangerous scenarios. Someone she kind falls, of like breaks her neck. <laughs> she like looks at him like she, she thought she was the only one thinking along this line. Everyone's been telling her like, oh, just it'll be okay. Like, That's what I said. What? Yeah. I don't know why we just don't go and stab him right now, to be honest. Well, you see, here's the thing. He may be more useful to us alive at the moment than dead. Because uh, dead men don't talk. But that guy, he works for... Uh, oh, God, what's the name of the... the dude? Sorry, I've lost New, all my notes. The Free these. Fields Coalition? No, the big scary spy master dude Stavros. who we spoke with. Stavros. Stavros, thank you. Yeah, Stavros. I was thinking of the guy from Game of Thrones. Um... Yes, uh, he works for uh, Stavros, and he's the guy that we trust the least. So um, maybe it's best that we keep him all around right now until there's an opportune moment to uh, ask him some questions. Once their hand is revealed. She smiles, throwing down the breadcrumbs down to uh, her pet underduck. All right, then. Do it your way. Yeah. For now, but uh, uh, you can trust me, Sarah. We'll get rid of him at some point, just at the right moment. All right. Things always go so much smoother when you're around. Try not to get your head knocked again. I'll do my best. And remember, killing people is less so about how you kill them, but when. It's not about how you kill him, it's about when. She repeats to herself, kind of like getting this mantra in her head as and a young girl. And also a little, a little bit why. But that we'll talk about bit. another time. A little bit. All right. I mean, this guy's a bad guy. So. All right. It's good to see you well, and I'm glad to see you've got a new friend. I don't know what to call her, <laughs> but you can Quack. help me name her. Ah, uh, I had a daughter and I forgot her name as well. So I, <laughs> I had a daughter and she was an underduck as well. No, <laughs> uh, let's see. Ah, uh, and I well, was a young underduck. Wait, yeah, no, I don't have a daughter. No, I don't have kids in this one. Oh man, I can't keep track of all the children I have. In you have, you don't have a daughter. You don't have a daughter. You do have a yeah. wife back home. I do have a wife. Uh, well, my w wife's name is Rosie. Rosie, I rather like or, that. Black. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe something like that. Rosie. Black. Does the duck respond? Black. Oh, she likes it. She likes the name Black. Rosie. That's good. Go to bed. 
I will eat you. I think at this Black. point, um, it's time for me to move on on the watch, so I leave them to it. <laughs> She's like, and at this point, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> this is now the time for me to sign out. <laughs> uh, um, Sarah will eventually fall asleep if he's taking watch. Hmm. He's been up for a while, I think. Hmm. Um, okay, like, he'd probably just do the Dragon Age Origins things and just, like, check on everyone at the campsite. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh... Stop by, stop by Calvin if he hasn't fallen asleep yet. We're, uh, cause yeah, we're sort of, we're in this room, right? Like above the barn or something? Yeah. Uh, you're not above, it's all ground floor. Um, but it's just sort uh, of like, a, uh, like, it almost looks like it was an extension that was built on. Uh, and it's just got two double beds in, uh, chests, um, and other than that, uh, a door leading through to the main house and a door that leads out the back. Uh, Calvin is dozy, but I mean, if uh, you could, you'd be easy enough to wake up. Hey, buddy, everything okay? Sort of rubs his head. It's been a hell of a day. Glad you're uh, got your head back on straight. Anything I, uh, I need to know? Well, I know a little bit about magic, not a whole lot, but. We sure do seem to have a whole lot of trouble that's been following us around ever since we picked up uh, little Lucy over there. Hmm. Don't know. Might be her, might be just what's in the air. This whole this whole trip has been strange since day one, starting with this rain and now all the way through to a stranger than a stranger than a I still ain't got nothing. Uh, but uh, Stranger than a badger with bat wings. There we go. I knew I could get a new one. <laughs> but, yeah, it it's... Uh, what, what's your... Uh, what, what, what's your read on Lucy? I think she's harmless in of herself, but, you know, wizards, they're like lightning rods for magical things. Especially her kind. Probably, probably none of her doing, but it does seem to, uh, you know, fall around. I mean, as far as if she's any problem to us or going to be uh, an issue, I mean, heck. I mean, I sort of look at it or be draggled, rain, somewhat a little bit drunk, maybe bleary eyed I don't know whether she's listened to us or not. I'm trying to be quiet, but I mean, she's hell. She's asleep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, you, you are. You've had. You've probably had the rough, rough, roughest couple of days you've had. I think it's like, well, hell, I mean, she's about as pitiful as a pixie on a pickaxe. But so I don't think that she's going to be anything other than any trouble directly. But man, I think it's going to follow her wherever we go. <sighs> okay, we'll get some sleep, old friend. Yep, we've got more trouble are coming our way, that's for damn sure. Well, glad I can be here to watch your back. Well, as long as you stop getting hit by trees, I'll have I'll your back too, that. buddy. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Let's not talk about the watch trees out so for much. those trees. They, uh, yeah, you know. We'll, we'll move on from the tree stories. <clears throat> hey, who's the third story of that tree when it hit you? Uh, I'm going to bed on that one. Yeah, Good night. <laughs> well, that that something that you... Ooh, Good. Well, I was going to say, it's not something you generally have to practice is dodging trees. Usually they're more static. Uh, but <laughs> That's true. I believe, yeah, that was a uh, magic... Uh, no, a magic item for Lucy. It's a magic item for Lucy oh. from Wind Flora. Thank you, my friend. Hey, thanks. <laughs> magic thanks. stuff just keeps showing up. <laughs> so, like... <Yeah. laughs> So like the room is pretty small, but they're they're in like beds just opposite one another. So um, yeah. I just like shake wo uh, shake woozy. I cannot speak to them. Shake <laughs> woozy. I shake woozy. Oh, just, just get southern on it. Then you'll be you'll be right there. Just let it all <laughs> slide right on out. Take a vacation out. for a while. I take a vacation. Though, in front of the lake. Yeah, yeah he takes yeah, time yeah. to swing back into it. It's, um, it's fine. I'll, uh, <laughs> specifically when it comes to Jess, I just can't say your name right. Oh, uh, I probably didn't roll that correctly, so sorry. It's okay. It's I'll, um, I'll sort of like shake her awake. 
Or like, you know, if she's like dozing, I'll like you know, yeah, shake her a little bit and say. Looks like she probably fell asleep like in the midst of writing into her little journal because it's just kind of folded across her chest and she's just crashed. <laughs> hey, you oh. okay? Oh, God is, yes. Um, all things, oh, all things considered. Yeah, I don't want so. to uh, I keep you up for too long just checking that everything's been okay the past few days. No, uh, I'm, I'm now public enemy number one. Um, magic just sort of keeps happening around. That's new. And there's a plot against the would-be king and uh, the, the dark thing. So uh, th that's really just yeah. the cherry on top, I think, at this point. Sounds like it. Okay. Well, uh... I don't know if the magic stuff's got anything to do with you, or just being who you are, but, uh, no. I would like to say no, but, um, I, I am a little worried about that, uh, if I may be completely honest with you. Yeah? <clears throat> I did have a, uh, well, she gestures to the, like, there's kind of, it almost looks like premature gray, but it's white, uh, kind of streaks of white on her hair that's usually sort of braided in so it's kind of hidden. I did have a curse on me once. A couple years back. Really now? It, yeah. Um, the family squabble, that's all. Uh, don't really want to talk mm -hmm. about that in, in great detail, but uh, we took we'll care of it. Later. That's, that's good. At least well, hopefully this isn't a curse. Hopefully this is just a uh, coincidence. Also something I that I don't like believe in. So. Yeah, no, I'm sure will be fine. We'll get some rest. Uh, looks like yes. we got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Yes, I suppose we'll have our answers uh, then, won't we? How's your All head? Right. My head? Oh, uh, better. Yeah, um... The less we talk about the tree, I, I think, the better. Um, <laughs> Good point. Um, well, ah. there are also some some supplies and things in that wagon we stole, so might be worth ransacking a bit more. Okay. That's where the duck well, uh, came from, by the way, so be careful. Oh, it's good to know. The duck. Yeah, the less oh, I think uh, about that, the better as well. Yes. Oh. Good plan. <laughs> uh, no, Calvin, and uh, sort of looks up at and the gold. Double all your gold. That We did have a good one, at least. Yeah, yeah um, we got one good one. <laughs> nice. All right, well, uh, I'll see you uh, both in the morning. Yes. Good night. And I'll, uh, good night. And I'll uh, step out. You uh, to finish my watch. Yeah, you can uh, get some sleep. And uh, Curtis keeps an eye on everyone. And uh, after a little while, you uh, are you waking someone else for uh, their watch as you've kind of. I'm gonna wake up. Yeah, I'm gonna some... wake up the Ram because this guy's a dickhead. So I'll like Duran. give him a uh, little kick awake. Yeah. Like, yep. Duran draws like a blade of just a, a knife uh, from his hip and has it sort of like in front of him defensively instantaneously and then sees you and see him wipe some sweat from his brow and my watch sure all right and he stands Stretching his uh, limbs stiff and uh, sheaths the dagger. How long have you served Stavros, Duran? In their long the war finished? Mm hmm. What's he like? Looking for a man like that? That'd be easy, huh? He's an arsehole. You know he's an arsehole. Sure do. 
You don't like me, I don't like you. But we have a job to do. And believe it or not, mm -hmm. once I actually agree what we're here to do, it's nice to actually be doing something with some degree of honor to it. As a man in your line of business has to do a lot of dishonorable things this time. You fight in the war? Certainly. You see much honor in any of that? No. But I suppose it all depends on uh, what you're fighting for. That's what honor is, right? Not what you do, but why you do it. That depends if you give a shit about what they're fighting for. You think a lot of those people that you cut down during the war weren't just farm hands and people who wanted to go home, see their loved ones again? I was almost one of them. No, oh, no. Little nobility in that. But, uh. We can always strive for some, right? As you My boss is a uh, more honorable more. man since yours, it would seem. Well, I don't doubt that. The mind's more powerful. That's true. My life since I've gotten back. If I had to sum it up in one word, I would say... Boring. He chuckles. In a uh, an, an odd moment of openness for uh, Curtis, perhaps it's because he's been knocked on the head and he's super tired, he says, you know, I could go back home to La Freelance at any time. But I haven't been back in seven years. Why is that? I'm guessing you've got a cause that you're serving with someone back home you're looking after? Perhaps. Sometimes that troubles me. War was easier. Simpler. This time is... A lot of people spent their lives killing and now don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. Still, plenty more to kill, I'm sure. You watch oh, yourself, Duran. Oh, I'm watching you. And this lot. I'm You're sure. Going to sleep. Your turn. And he walks over the door, creaks it open. The wind sort of comes in, a slight chill through the crack, and looks over his back, looks at you getting sort of comfortable, and says, What do you reckon we're going to find when we get there? Death. And as they sort of nod back to their previous conversation and uh, uh, share time in the military, he'd say, uh, on your way, soldier. He gives a protracted salute. It's, there's a lot of sarcasm in it, but it, it almost comes reflexively. And he steps out and quietly closes the door behind him. Uh, eventually get some sleep um, but I think he's really pretty quite fitful sleep um, mm. he, he didn't really mean to reveal that much to Duran but um, he's not quite feeling himself he you fall into a fitful sleep and as you left Duran uh, on watch everyone roll me some initiative Oh, uh, you guys! Oh, you, you son of a gun! Having a drunk Calvin, I 
singing songs during combat would actually be pretty fun. Mm. You guys uh, sleep and you awake to um, the sound of uh, the door rattling uh, wildly. And everyone sort of has that moment where um, sort of fear sets in and you realize Duran is standing uh, in the middle of the room uh, in the process of um, uh, ch- like he's literally changing his uh, his shirt and sorting his armor out and he looks at people who are sort of like they look around worried and he says it's just the wind and you realize the wind is just so savagely blowing outside that it's just rattling this d- rickety old house almost to pieces looks around says uh, it's barely daybreak but we should get cracking Right. <clears throat> Alright, uh, pack up, let's go. <sighs> Ugh. Morning. A little grub before we get going. And you should drink some water after all the, um, imbibing <sighs> yesterday. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. That's not what Goddard says. He says that you're just supposed to drink a little bit more to make you feel better. Hmm, that's... That's the advice a drunkard would give, uh, to be perfectly honest. But, uh... He said that he wasn't a drunkard. He said that he didn't go to meetings. Hmm. Well, and that's the sure way to tell. (laughs) That's the sure way to tell. (laughs) I don't go to meetings, Uh, therefore I'm fine. (laughs) Uh, at some point, Curtis will come in as well, back in his, uh, like, uh, sort of, like, naval suit, coat, I guess, and, uh, go and have some breakfast. You guys are treated to, um, what is, uh, probably leek and something stew, soup, something. It's very watery, like, almost clear, um... It's so bad that Will vanishes. Like, he's just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm walking. I'm walking, there, there we go. I'm walking yeah. here. <laughs> you, um... Yeah, it's a, it's a terrible, terrible concoction. Uh, mostly because it just seems to have no flavor and doesn't really fill you at all. Um, food is definitely just a scarce. Uh, and uh, the uh, mayor uh, apologizes just uh, um, uh Well, I'm... Very sorry, it's just uh, we don't have too much surplus, as it were. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, I'll tell you what, what's, what's, what's this village called? Uh, it's not really a village, it's just myself. Uh, and uh, there's Harold over the road, uh, and just, just over there there's uh, the, uh, the, the Smith family. Just us free. Okay, well, uh, if I can, I'll see about sending some supplies back here away. In, uh, I, if you could do us one more favor, uh, Mayor, the car, uh, mention no one. Mention no one that we came by. We're on uh, official and important business. And uh, no, uh, it would be well if no one knew that we came this way. Your lady friend mentioned uh, before. Uh, I, well, uh, even if yes, I weren't to wife. tell people, <laughs> your wife. He says, looking at Sarah. <clears throat> no, no, uh, no, no. That's my daughter. Uh, oh, right. Uh, your daughter which... mentioned you were here on business of the crown. Uh, to be completely honest, uh, obviously I wouldn't say anything. But even if I did. I doubt anyone would really believe the tales in the last uh, few hours. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't. Uh, it's always best to be uh, certain. As agents of the crown, you know, it's... Uh, some people will believe stories like the ones you might tell if you were deep in your cups. So make sure that there uh, aren't too many cups. You know what I mean? He uh, pats one of the kegs that you traded for uh, board and uh, food for <laughs> the night. Does <laughs> uh, I'll uh, try to keep my partying to a minimum. 
It was a, a pleasure meeting you all. Consider threatening him and then think better of it. It's probably not worth it. <laughs> Good. Smile. Thank you, Mayor. Meet you. Uh, you are most welcome. Uh, safe travels out there. These are Likewise. strange days. Truly they are. But we must be on our way, so uh, thank you for your hospitality. It's best we be leaving. He nods and uh, you guys uh, will sort of mount up and depart, I presume? Does anyone need anything before they leave? Oh, I just get up on top of old tall squeal and uh, go sweet! I'm going to change out of my guards costume mm. and back into like my regular travel gear now that mm. uh curtis is awake awake <laughs> you guys uh curtis you also notice that you're not sure where this cart came from uh but you don't recognize any of the stuff in the back of it i don't ask yeah <laughs> it's best I, uh, not to might have mentioned something but yeah i did uh roll for the magical item so i lucy's probably okay, just uh, taking taking Sammy. stock of what's back there <laughs> Uh, what is it? Um, oh! I know, right? <laughs> you find... Super uh, useful. You actually find something. You find uh, a book. Um, you uh, dust it off, uh, sort of, and you notice uh, that it, there's, uh, there's some powder that's got over it. Um, it's um, uh, got a uh, sort of fine... Like, it seems to be kept next to a jar that is cracked. Um, and you pick it up, and uh, as you look at the cover, uh, it's a badly worn uh, copy of... You don't recognize... Uh, roll me a history check. Sure. Are the Nat ones going to be out in force today? Let's find out. Oh, yeah! That was so annoying, Will! You're so hey. lucky! There were, like, <laughs> five yeah. Nat ones in a row. There it is. Ah. Amazing. You know... <laughs> That's on that one. Yep, you uh, <laughs> you've never heard of this individual uh, for some reason, uh, <laughs> but you you look at it and whoever uh, this individual, this <laughs> Gavin Fjordhammer fellow is, uh, you found his uh, cookbook and exercise regime, uh, which you guys can check out uh, if you want to learn a little bit more on Fridays in real life. There is also some stuff. School want to do a little plug? Just a little... little Wait, little what? Is this the thing that you've been talking about? So, uh, well, I mean, we've been we've been doing it already. It was going to be just hashtag Fitness Fridays, but we had so many people who were super excited about it that uh, we now have three days a week. If you want to join us for your D&D Fitness Challenge, I will be uh, assigning and rolling up uh, the number of reps for different things. We currently have... Uh, D and D Fitness Friday. We have side quest Sundays, and coming tomorrow for all those people watching, we have Weapon Damage Wednesday. Where Ooh. what do we do when we get hit with, when we hit, get hit by a weapon? Rub some dirt in it and walk it off. So it's your day to go out and do some cardio. So join okay. us tomorrow for uh, Weapon Damage Wednesdays, and uh, <sighs> stay tuned for more D and D Fitness challenges in Twitter. Because sure, why not? It's there so we go. good. It keeps me on track. Love it. <laughs> Love it. That is uh, that is what you find. You find a book uh, by Gavin Fjordhammer. It is his cookbook. Um, there is an entire like you notice. You open it up and there's uh, at least a hundred pages that are just recipes for eggs. Uh, one including uh, a recipe <laughs> just called Tam Tam's Eggs because we're getting all of the crossovers in here right now. Uh, Tam's Eggs are in there. Check out some Eggs Tam. Clips podcast. <laughs> eggs a la Tam. Uh, but yeah, it's full of like handy t techniques and ways that you can uh, uh, work out and uh, get your fitness in. And it's, uh, it's amazing. And reading this will actually have a benefit if you... I can't remember how long you have to read the book for. You have um, to uh, read it for like six days. I had it. I have it here. Um, Forty-eight hours over a period of six days or fewer, uh, yeah. your strength score will permanently increase by two, as does your you maximum strength score. There you are. So if you follow this fitness regime for forty-eight hours, uh, your strength score will increase by two permanently. 
It's just okay. that. Until you start eating trash. If you start eating trash, I'm a, I'm a, it, Gavin Fjord a storm, a storm will come flying in, a tall <laughs> storm, in fact. Some call it a squall <laughs> will come in and, 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 and suck all your gains away. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. But yeah, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's incredibly, uh, you notice that it's almost enchanted, almost blessed uh, by Gavin himself. There you are. That's, that's incredible. I'm going to become a muscle wizard, you guys. <laughs> Yo. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Gonna go lift for a spell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I see what uh, you do. Afterwards, if you want, to, if you don't, if you want, to, you know, keep those lean gains. You go on a long march afterwards. Oh, mm. so speaking of which, let's get this show back on the road uh, yes. as you guys move off uh, in your uh, your dainty little carriage, uh, moving along. As, uh, do you start reading this, Lucy? Um, I think I'm gonna hold on to it for now. Okay. Stash it, stash it with <laughs> so a wild magic surge for you. You get a wild Lucy magic from, surge as you read the it. contents. <laughs> Does that apply to skimming it or reading yep, it? Yep, this happens right now. You uh, okay. you briefly sort of flip through the contents. But that back cover yeah. had a little bit of a, yeah. <laughs> a little whammy on, on it. it. I, I read the uh, <laughs> author bio. <laughs> <laughs> the author bio, and there was just so much like that. That's a thing. So magical. <laughs> Gavin's had so many wild so magic magical. surges when he pens, pe like he puts pen to paper, it just transfers naturally. Oh, so yeah, uh, Roman, a wild magic surges. You're reading in the back of the car, and the cart uh, takes off, and we're going to uh, we're going to see uh, a little bit of uh, travel here as you guys make your way through. Um, one of you has a map, I believe. Or do none of you have I mean, a map? I think yeah, no, I Lucy think, got a map, think, didn't she? Oh, Lucy. Yeah, no. I, well, uh, didn't we get? I, didn't didn't the 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 head of the 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 tavern keeper? Didn't that was like a map of the? Town. Or was that? Oh my God! Or did I get it from Stavros? Did Stavros give me a map? Yes, I think I think you Stavros got a map. Had a map, a map sure. Yeah. yeah, I think Stavros gave me a map. I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, you... Um, yeah, he, oh, yeah, we did the double tap. Yeah, he did. That's how you know. The <laughs> Yeah. Okay. They were here, and now they're here. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys... You guys uh, are traveling along, and as uh, all of this happens... Uh, Lucy, do you want to read out your, your wild magic search? Sure. Uh, target suffers burns if they touch water hotter than 80 degrees. It doesn't actually say if that's Fahrenheit or centigrade. I know. I was going to say, that's like some tepid, <laughs> that's like some tepid tea. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, like, Lucy, you have incredibly delicate skin. I do. Very delicate I'm a skin. fragile, fragile shelter. Muscle. I'm a fragile muscle. Shut up, this rain isn't over 80 degrees. Oh, that would be so brutal. Oh, I hope yeah. this isn't warm rain. Uh, not oh. at the moment. It isn't, no. Because it's okay. first thing in the morning and it's windy. Okay. We'll see how that goes. So yeah, you um, you are you know making your way um, uh, along uh, in this carriage, winding your way through uh, what is a, a nicer road. Um, and someone uh, will hopefully explain to Curtis that you guys have taken a detour because the like the terrain you were trying to traverse was just unbearable like you were trying to go almost directly there the carriage was just getting bogged down uh, so you found a, a, a well-traveled road uh, that is the main road that travels straight from the north to the south uh, and along this way um, in the distance uh, you see that there is a town but it is quite some way away um, and it looks to be on your map as sort of the, the most southernmost town that still remains uh, in this territory uh, that isn't sort of crossing the border into what is now New Freefields Coalition Territory. Uh, so it won't be Farmer's Rest, but it will be an actual proper town. Um, as you guys are making your way along, uh, we're going to go around and we're going to do a little travel mechanic here. So it's real simple. Uh, as last week, um, you guys just uh, pick a skill, uh, tell me a problem that you come across, and uh, you roll against it, uh, and we'll see uh, if you are successful in uh, circumventing this. It's a good way for you guys to uh, interact and uh, 
throw some crazy shenanigans out there. So I'm going to go around. I'm literally going to go around uh, camera order, starting off with Squall himself. So Squall, uh, on a, one skill in particular of any kind you want, tell me something you encounter. Maybe a traveler on the road you need to persuade or swindle. Uh, perhaps uh, it is uh, an animal uh, that comes out uh, that you're trying to sort of tame before it uh, tears into your carriage. Maybe it's a physical object uh, or an obstacle that you uh, need to circumvent. Yeah, so let me see here. Um, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, uh, it's good. And I'll let you choose exactly. I think it's going to be all about navigating. That as we're going here, he's got uh, he's got the map out. He's looking at the road. He's looking at the sky. It's rainy. So, mm -hmm. and uh, since the roads are washed out, uh, he believes that we are not on course. Uh, okay. And uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, both Sarah and probably Curtis and Lucy all trying to like backyard back uh, backseat navigate. Backseat yeah, backseat driver telling me all the different ways to go, and this is for Calvin to try to figure it, figure out uh, which way it's going. It's like he looks at Lucy. He's like, Lucy, you, you. I think you're even just looking at it upside down. It is not a left turn. We we need to go south. It's the north town in the south, not the not the south town in the north. Do, do you think okay. I don't know how to use a map? Honestly. Well, you are pointing us in the wrong direction, so. Oh, Holy moly! Right. And <laughs> fuck you, oh, Reaver! Oh my god! Six to the grave. <laughs> god damn it, is Reaver! All right, I'll roll these. When, when it comes around yeah. to my turn, I'll, I'll have them ready. Yeah. So and uh, but yeah, no. So I just I was like I just look and I go, bless your little Hi. wizard heart. Go back to reading your book and let me do the navigating here. <laughs> Oh, 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 sassy. You know, and, and if we get lost, I will say nothing. I will not say I told you so. Lucy, I'm as sure you, flip you won't. The, uh, <laughs> Lucy, as you flip through the book, uh, you find uh, like a basically a, a, a deep breathing relaxation techniques from Gavin Trodhammer. <laughs> it's been so effective. Like any time, like someone, particularly a wizard infuriates you beyond all belief. Here are some deep breathing techniques that will help you stop you from throttling necromancers. And they're, they're helpful. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave so Will to do his do, roles. Uh, well, give me a survival check as you, uh, or a navigator's tools if you have, like, nav Uh, I do not have navigator, nav navigator's tools. Uh, Navar but I can do a survival check for you. <laughs> navigating skills. Them navigating skills. Ooh, uh, on a, a seven, seven. <laughs> Calvin, you realize that you probably need to stop into this town or you guys are going to end up hopelessly lost. Uh, you realize <laughs> that it's not necessarily your fault. Uh, the map is just not detailed enough because um, you are coming into sort of like... Uh, like Stavros's map mostly had sort of... Yeah. Um, uh, sort of the local town on it as, as such, but he didn't okay. have sort of uh, a map for you that was... Uh, more detailed of sort of like the smaller settlements and, and the uh, smaller, less traveled roads. So probably to Lucy's great shock, uh, Calvin looks at the map and goes, you know what? I don't think it is you. This map is just crap. He throws it out and he goes, I'm stopping for directions because I'm a bard and I do that. <laughs> wow. I'm pulling this wagon over and stopping for directions. <laughs> Okay, I'm well, I can't na <laughs> read in the map, eh, but talking to people now that I can do. As you're uh, as you're closing in on the uh, town, we're going to cut round now to uh, to Tia. As um, Sarah, give me a uh, give me a skill check, uh, some kind of problem that you encounter, and how you use that skill to get round. As you realize that uh, Calvin explains that you guys need a better map and. It's going to need to be something you pick up in this town that's coming up. Well, Sarah is full of energy uh, and doesn't always need to be on the cart. Sometimes she will run way ahead, and she's telling herself that she's scouting, but she's really just a kid who needs to run and burn energy. Uh, so at some point, she's going to come up to a group of farm kids who don't know uh, that the cart is behind her, and they are going to try and pick on her and rob her, and she's going to 
essentially try and scare them off and be like, oh, I've got friends right down the road. Okay. But back off so before you, they get here. As you run ahead, you do indeed notice that there are a small group of children uh, that are actually, there's a, like a small winding uh, footpath that leads off to a, a tiny uh, sort of group of uh, houses, similar to the ones that you uh, stayed in before, like a really sort of little homestead, nothing else. And um, you uh, jog off uh, ahead to sort of almost uh, let them know that the card is coming through. Very authoritative. One of them turns around to you and is just like, looks you up and down. He's a bit bigger than you. Uh, not quite as, like, muscled, though. Uh, but his height seems to give him that confidence. Give me that intimidation roll. Uh, he... not a one. Oh, okay, damn. 24. So he, uh, he steps to you. And uh, you point back at the cart, and uh, you can actually hear sort of like uh, like ranting and raving of Calvin, uh, and he sounds very angry as he's complaining about the quality of this map. And as he's moving along, like people suddenly like, oh crap, uh, th these kids suddenly. Uh, he, she's not kidding. She has friends with her. Um, we should bail. And they, uh, the kid just looks down at you and just like, yeah, well. We we were we, we we didn't even want to play on this this. We were, so we, were, we were gonna what? You're gonna run? That's what you're gonna do? Or I'm gonna take a bow and arrow and I'm gonna put one in the back of your leg. You ready? You better Hang start on running. For, uh, just a second there, guys, because we got an awesome raid in from Table Story. Welcome hey! to the good to see you guys. So my name is Brad. Mr. Brad Woto in the house. How you doing, my friend? Good hey, to see Brad. you. I think, in fact, this Saturday I will be with Brad himself thank you, thank you. Um, Ooh, on awesome. Table Story Channel. So you can uh, definitely go give all these guys a follow. Uh, welcome in if you need the channel, guys. Uh, it's some kind of role play. We do a lot of interactive dungeons and some dragons. Right now, we're in a little travel mechanic. So go yeah, uh, check indeed, it out. Yeah. So we play with well, Margaret and Brad and a few others on Saturday. So uh, I'll see you guys then. What I'll do is I'll do a quick recap for you guys. Um, they, uh, the Gather Party together, we have. Uh, uh, everyone, as you can see on the screen, sort of uh, who they're playing, uh, their characters' names, and, uh, and what they're about. And uh, we have uh, the wonderful Calvin, uh, who's played by Tall School. We have the uh, lovely 14-year-old uh, Sarah, who's very naive and played by uh, uh, Laura Lania. We have the <laughs> misfortunate wizard uh, Lucy, played by Little Cup of Joe. Uh, and we have Curtis, who is trying to keep everyone together. He's a human rogue, uh, played by, of course, uh, kind of Will himself. Um, the world uh, of Long March, um, we are currently in a situation where there's a lot of famine going on and the party are in the kingdom of Rivercroft and have recently found out that the prince uh, who was due for a coronation is missing. He went to a diplomatic meeting and was never seen again. Rumours have spread that there was supposedly an attack on his caravan. So now the party have been sent by the spymaster of Rivercroft to find out what is going on uh, at a place called Farmer's Rest where the meeting was set to take place. Uh, and bring back news of hopefully the prince's um, health, shall we say, and bring him back in time for his coronation and before all hell breaks loose in the kingdom. Um, currently, we're on a little travel mechanic uh, on a wagon. We've just, uh, Calvin's recently realized that the map they've got is a load of crap. And uh, Sarah's just uh, scared off a bunch of uh, kids who were playing in the road ahead of the wagon. Uh, because she's a 14-year-old kid who likes to uh, show off that she is allowed to carry a bow and arrow and travels with adventurers, and is a bit of a badass. So. There we uh, have it. I will, th I will throw rocks at them as they are leaving, not trying to oh, hit good. them, just like, oh, good. yeah, oh, you good. better run. That's they, what I thought. Uh, uh, one of them is going to turn, and he will chuck a rock back at you uh, in, in just defiance of you. Uh, tell me, does a 14 hit your armor glass? Uh, no. Ooh. 17. Okay. I yeah, bounce it off. He, yeah, he throws it back, and as you sort of swipe it to the side and reach up for, like, an arrow in your quiver, he turns and sprints off back to his farm. Uh, absolute terror. Uh, and, uh... You throw like a girl! It's Wait, true. I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah understands suddenly that sexism exists. In a terrible, terrible world of famine and hatred, uh, you. Uh, the hey, party what are my values? <laughs> what are my values? Uh, speaking of values, uh, well, buddy, yeah. give me uh, a skill check yeah. for this uh, traveling mechanic as uh, okay. you are coming up so, to this town. 
To contextualize this, these are my six wild magic surges donated by Isreva. Um, my death oh will herald the coming of an age of horrors. So when I die, the age of horrors is coming. Oh, so you better, you better okay. keep me alive. Yeah. Keep me alive. Uh, I am also surrounded by rabid wolves, which will lead into my next uh, uh, travel encounter idea. Um, someone nearby has two extra thumbs jutting from his forehead. Uh, extra thumbs on forehead. Hopefully like a devil, you know, like that. Um, <laughs> I also can't employ magical means of improving my armor class. Uh, which fucking Ooh, sucks. Damn, that's that's bad. Yeah. Uh, my next attack inflicts damage that only a wish can heal. Holy so shit! So no one can my next attack. And if I have fewer than 100, 100 hit points, I am fully healed. However, I am already fully healed. Uh, okay. So that is actually, well, maybe not because I was injured. You're, so maybe this yeah, is... you have a head wound, which um, you yeah. realize whatever you whatever salve you were given has healed you entirely. And any sort of lingering nice. aches and groans, you actually realize that uh, as you feel your chest sort of like you're used to feeling that because you have a you have an injury that is yet to be yeah, shown. Yeah, a long time. You notice that it hasn't healed entirely. I don't want to take that away, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you feel like there's no longer the recurring pain, the wince. Your shoulder, nice. uh, which is sort of uh, maybe been stiff first thing in the morning, didn't ache this morning. You feel better than you were expecting to, uh, than you have in a very long time. Interesting. I'm gonna, gonna have to go back and get more of those salves. Uh, mm. So, my, uh, yeah, the idea for the Travel Encounter, so the Rabid Wolves, is um, uh, we're, we're coming into a, a town, right? So we're on the sort of outskirts of a town uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. So, um, uh, maybe I have a, a contact or someone that I know of uh, from this town that I was looking to meet. Um, yeah. But due to the famine and uh, how everyone is, you know, really struggling at this time, as we get close to the uh, the house, um, we find that there are uh, just you know rabid wolves yeah. have taken over the sort of outskirts, yeah. and everyone's retreated into the the, the town itself. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so I'd like to use like a, I don't maybe like a survival or, or something like that to um, let's see. Uh, survival would have been like used by, uh... Right, yeah. Um, I'll use a stealth check to sort of creep around them. Okay, uh, I'm going to put a pin in that them. just for the second, okay. because this is going to work perfectly for a moment. But first of all, we're going to cut around to Lucy. Lucy, I'm going to need one final uh, skill check from yourself. As you're coming up on this sure. town, uh, we'll... None of uh, none of what Will has uh, described has happened just yet. That's going to happen as we get closer. But uh, yeah. All right. Um, we'll say uh, there's some kind of maybe arcane uh, rune around one of these houses that we're headed towards on the outskirts. Oh, uh, that might, might there be is. a trap. Uh, give me <laughs> an arcana. Yes, that's what I was hoping for. Uh, well, we, yeah, I'm expecting in that one because it's you. Uh, on a 15! <laughs> wow. No offense. No offense. I'm just going by what I've seen. Well, you did not see what happened was, last yeah, game. <laughs> four nat ones in a row. It was unholy. And we were just like, it's yeah. because Will, Will can't be here laughing when it happens. It's crazy. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, um,. There was this uh, there, there was this sense that you got as you were approaching the town. On a 15, you suddenly realize uh, and probably need to stop this carriage right now. Like, you get this really uneasy sensation. Um, and uh, how, do you, how do you explain? Like, you don't know what it is. You just feel something that tickles at the... Uh, it prickles at your skin. It, it's horrible. Sure. It, like, it's... Almost, almost like a burning sensation, like you've been stung. Yeah. Uh, as you were. Ugh. Yeah. All right, um, everybody, we need to stop right now. There's uh, something not good going on. Give me a moment. There's mad. Uh, okay. There's magic that is a problem that is not mine. Okay. Calvin, do you stop? You're right. You're, you're driving. Uh, yeah. Calvin's just like. 
what's he got? Uh, I mean, he's like, he's like looking around for trees. Yeah. He's looking around for ducks. <laughs> you're out in like um, an open, you're out on an open road. It's sort of no more buildings uh, other than sort of the outskirt buildings around the town itself. The town doesn't have walls. Um, it's, uh, you know, larger. It's nowhere near as big as the capital. But I mean, it's, you know, even the capital is not massive. There's maybe sort of 20, 30 buildings here. Uh, none of them with sort of like high towering uh, spires or anything like that. But Lucy, you realize yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's not magic. It's the opposite. In front of you is a dead zone. Um, this is very odd. The there is no magic here at all. Not a bit of it. Um, Wait, what? I, I, like, like a dead zone. I, it's just a, a void of magic. There's no power here at all. It doesn't happen very often. Um, what, what does that mean? Does that, does that mean something? What does that mean exactly that I can explain <laughs> to them? Uh, roll me a history like, check. It all up. You've, you've studied yeah. sort of this sort of thing before, I would imagine. Like, uh, sure. specifically, it's you know, anti magic is something that is uh, ooh, of interest to uh, to Brecken Day. Yeah, you you know whatever this is, it is incredibly powerful, and you realize that if you travel another twenty feet further you will lose the ability to cast. Not permanently, but there is no... Anything magical becomes mundane in there. Mm -hmm. It surrounded the entire town, from what you can tell. Okay. Um, we should probably take a detour. If I go through there, I will be without magic for who knows how long. Um, it, it, it's sort of like an anti-magic field. It just deadens okay. all of it. You know, and, and this know, is like a, say my songs are magical. Would that be uh, an... any magic? Doesn't matter if it's a wizard. Doesn't matter if it's magical music. Doesn't matter if you've got magic in your pinky and that's it. It's all gone. Lucy, you would understand that anything that is it would even supposedly affect sort of holy magic it is so like a void. clerical yeah clerics uh you know druid Clerical. magic you know everything uh will just be and like supposedly it will return the second you cross over the threshold it might take it might not be instantaneous maybe it will take you know time for you to re soak in the magic uh, or maybe you mm. need to restudy a book or something it is at this Wait. point, however, that it's, Curtis... It's all over this town? Yeah, it surrounds the whole okay. town. And Curtis, you will remember that your friend, Tarkov, who is your local contact here, is a magic user. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but if... That sounds like a place that I would like to avoid about the same as I like to avoid harpies with herpes. So um, I vote for the detour. So this Tarkov guy, uh, I might not have been here before, but would I know whether this place has always had like an anti-magic field around it? Nope. Nope. Never, never before. It definitely it's, hasn't, okay. It's a bit possible that because they're, everyone's all afraid of wizards right now that they put something like this in place to keep people out. That's what I'm thinking as well. They definitely didn't used to have it. I have a friend here named Tarkov, and uh, never mentioned anything like this before. But it could also be related to our prince. We're not far out from where we uh, we know the prince to have been. Now, it is a little bit of a detour, but it might provide valuable information to contextualize what happened to the prince. People here might know. My friend Tarkov might have heard something. Well, I'm not afraid of not having any magic. I haven't had magic my whole life. I'm willing to go in, save the prince, save the day. True, it does mean that those that would use magic against us can't as well. 
So whilst Lucy and Calvin might not be so effective, neither will any of you know, any enemy mages. Yes. Well, you, you so haven't those got things. any um, magical items or anything on you, do you? Any no. enchanted weaponry? Anything like that? No. What about my duck? Is she magical? Uh, you might want to keep her out here just in case. Well, my... My, uh... Bandalore is magical. Then don't it just won't it work in there by the signs of things. It doesn't blow up Luke, magic users, yeah, it just yeah, means it Luke, can't work. Luke, does right. the town look it, deserted or like a ghost town from this distance? Roll me some perception checks. You notice that also you're not the only one looking. Duran has basically uh, pulled open like a flap, almost like the back hatch, uh, sort of in, in a truck cab, uh, and he peers out over the top, uh, looking forward with grave concern written all over his face. It's a 22 for Calvin. Okay, 18. we've... Uh, well, 13... Uh, Curtis, you uh, you can't make it out. Your sort of your mind is mm. more focused on trying to remember how how where exactly. Oh my God, Lucy. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! I'm I so told sorry. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so just so I do you so remember like that whole comment about the pixie on a pickaxe. <laughs> I do so, have the lucky feet. I should use it sometimes. Curtis, you look out. Uh, you, you, you have the unlucky feet. I swear to God. You, uh, Curtis, you're looking out. You, uh, you're trying to remember frantically, trying to remember where it is that Tarkov lives. Uh, Lucy, you're just abject I'm terror. Out by is this said thing. It, oh my God, yeah. Uh, you're trying to figure out how wide it is. How like many miles you'd have to detour through rough terrain just to get past yeah. this um yeah i'm like i'm like doing mental quadratic equations trying to figure mm. out the the spatial yeah. area of this thing so i know where to walk sarah you uh you look and uh you can see that uh, it doesn't look like the town is abandoned you can see you're pretty sure like lights on in windows uh sort of fires uh, probably burning in rooms uh, no smoke rising no sort of dead bodies that you can see no you know grisly warnings are on the road on the way in calvin you look and you actually hear something you hear howls you hear vicious wild howls coming from the town they are just coming in snatched in by the wind and taken away in seconds but far in the distance there are these eerie sounds coming out and then you hear just one scream that is cut off very quickly well friends that's not good there's howls coming from in there and there's people live people in there getting killed we need the man to help we saw them. before he was a wolf type thing maybe it's I, these guys uh, again out. yeah i lift out the collar which i still have yeah that gentleman who was wearing this and that's four chris successes to lucy because the gods are obviously not with your dice thank you wondering <laughs> silence nice. for Very nice. thank you. amazing um uh curtis will nod uh gravely and uh these are the guys that are trying to kill our prince we should investigate yeah um, i certainly don't like i actually look sympathetically to uh lucy yeah i'm not real fond of not having magic but we got i mean this is where we're going and this this correct i mean you, this is town is between us and uh uh yeah it, it's one of the main towns that runs sort of it was the last town in uh rivercroft territory before you're in new freefields territory and you are right the next town past this will be farmer's rest okay so okay. farmer's rest is beyond this but this is like between us and there hmm. we've got to figure out what's going Isn't on that here. where i was born farmer's rest or is it outside uh, of Armor's Rest as well? Like, is it, are we no. getting closer to my homeland? Okay. You are getting closer. 
Well, well. Wh why don't me and Lucy stay with the cart and the duck, and Duran can stay with us? She says, kind of trying Duran not to spit out of his name. Shakes his head and like yeah. climbs out through the back. Uh, and uh, what do you mean no? He Where are you going? Changes the number weapons. of wolves up there. We don't want to split up in this case. Whatever is going on in there, they're still within Rivercroft territory. And they're being slaughtered. Anyone with magic who they rely on for combat, if you don't want to go in, I'm not in charge of you. But I fucking want to find those people in there to die. Time to find some of that honor of yours, Duran. On me, then. Lucy, you can stay behind, or you can. I, I'm sure Duran can give you a sword or something. So uh, I would love. To I give Lucy one of I my daggers. I'm a liability. I I look at Lucy and go. So, if we cast something out here, do you think it gets wiped out once we step inside? It'll just disappear in there. Uh, you could okay. Try. You can use I'm a cantrip. Oh, yeah, I'll just uh, throw a firebolt. To demonstrate, it 